Hello students and welcome to our VOR approach execution video. Before we jump into the cockpit, let's quickly discuss the objective of this maneuver and some key factors that we'll be focusing on. Instrument approaches guide pilots from the en route and arrival phases of flight to the approach and landing phases under instrument meteorological conditions or IMC. The VOR approach accomplishes this through use of omnidirectional navigation and radios. In this maneuver execution video we will not be covering detailed aerodynamics, maneuver diagrams, common student errors, or the ACS standards. This video is to simply explain and demonstrate the execution of the maneuver and will vary based on the aircraft you are flying. To see all the additional details we just mentioned and to study this lesson's full-length presentation, podcast, diagrams, flashcards, lesson quiz, and a whole lot more, look up the VOR approach lesson on our website at wifi.cfi.com. Lastly, before we jump into the cockpit, there are a couple of key factors that we need to cover regarding this approach. Today, we will be executing the VORA approach into Ogden, Utah Airport. The identifier for the Ogden, Utah Airport is KOGD, that's Oscar Golf Delta. We would suggest pulling up this approach plate on a separate device or screen so that you can look at it and follow along with us as we demonstrate the approach to you. We are going to begin our in-flight video just north of the Ogden VOR and we're going to be flying outbound on the 331 radial at 7,200 feet. So we'll be just north of the VOR, head to outbound 7,200 feet on the 331 radial. While we're doing this, heading towards our DME arc, we're going to go ahead and complete our approach ABC checklist. We're going to get our air, A, sorry, stands for airspeed, and we'll get our ATIS and AWOS, which is the local weather. B is to build and brief the approach. So we'll build it, we'll make sure we got all the frequencies in, our approach courses, everything like that, and we'll brief the approach. And then C is we'll complete the approach checklist. Now that's gonna vary based on which aircraft you're flying, but you go ahead and pull out your approach checklist and run through all the items in there. We'll then complete the north DME arc at the established 10 DME as you will see on the approach. So as we're heading towards the arc, we'll do our ABC checklist. We'll get there and then we'll go ahead and arc to the west until we join our final approach course, at which point we will descend to and pass the Ogden VOR all the way down to our circling minimums and we are going to circle to land on runway 21. We will be completing this entire approach, obviously until we begin our circle to land, under simulated instrument conditions. In other words, we won't be looking outside the cockpit, we're going to be simulating that we are in the clouds and we can only see our instruments. So we'll cover the rest during the flight. Let's head out to the airplane and shoot this approach for you. All right, students, welcome out to our airplane as we are going to demonstrate this VORA approach to you into the Ogden Airport. So you can see it's a nice, beautiful day outside, but we are not going to be looking outside at all today. My apologies. We are going to have this view as we complete this entire approach. So we've just crossed the Ogden VR. We're outbound on the 331 radio to join the DME arc. At this time, we're going to go ahead and complete our approach ABC checklist. We've got our airspeed under control. We're between a 90 and 100 knots. That's right where I want to be. ATIS, go ahead right here. We've got 125.55 in our COM2, which is Ogden's ATIS. So I could go ahead and click that and listen to it if there was an ATIS on the sim, but there's not. So we'll just simulate that we got our local weather here. Again, you can see I've got the Ogden VOR tuned in right here. We've got the, our distance from the VOR down here in the bottom left corner. We're at the 7,200 feet, which is what we need to be at to go ahead and join the arc. So, we've done our ATIS uh, and our airspeed. So then we'll go ahead and build and brief the approach. Okay, We're just going to do this all with VORs. We're not going to build it into the GPS at all. So we're just going to be using VOR needles to do the arc and do the approach and circle the land runway 2-1. Uh, so we're just going to say, basically it's already built since we've got our frequency in and we can't really tune anything in here. We do need to put, uh, let's see, 118.7 is our comm backup for uh, the Ogden Tower. So 121.1 .1 is what we'd be talking to you right now in this area for the approach. And we'll get our comm in here for backup for Ogden Tower. Okay, so Salt Lake Approach, Ogden Tower, and everything else is about set up. 
then we can go ahead and brief it. So if you've got the chart pulled up next to you, you can look at it and follow along with me as I brief this approach. We're going to be doing the VORA approach in Ogden Hinkley. The VOR Vortag frequency is 115.7. We have that tuned in right here. Approach course is 101. We are not going to be setting our approach course over here yet because we still need this needle to fly our arc and everything. So we're just going to leave that as it is. Runway landing and touchdown zone elevation are not applicable because we're going to be circling and we can circle to any of the different runways. Today we're going to go to 21, but that's the reason they don't publish those numbers there. Airport elevation 4473. We could then go ahead and look at our notes non standard takeoff and alternate minimums. Uh, circling to runway 17, not applicable at night. We're doing this during the day. Circling not applicable for cat C and D. East of runways 21 and 35, we are cat A, so that doesn't apply to us. And we could go on, so on and so forth. For our missed approach, we'll make a climbing left turn to 13,000 direct to the Ogden VOR and on Ogden VOR radial 263 to Moy intersection, which is 15.1 DME out, and hold, and we'll continue our climb in the hold to 13,000. We have all of our frequencies already set up, so we're good there. For our minimum safe altitudes, if we're west of the Ogden VOR, it's 8,600 feet. If we are east of the VOR, it's 11,000 feet. So if there's an emergency, we'll climb to one of those different altitudes. And it looks like we're going to be shooting. We're going to head out to Ratgo intersection here. We're going to do the 10 DME arc at 7,200 feet. Once we get to the 281 radio, or to the 101 inbound, okay, it's the 281 radio outbound, 101 inbound, we'll turn inbound for our final approach course of 101, heading to the VOR, and we'll descend down to 5,700 feet at that point. After we cross the VOR, we'll be able to go down to our circling minimums, and the VOR is our final approach fix. We'll get down to our circling minimums of 4980. We're just going to round up and call that 5,000 feet. We'll maintain 5,000 feet for circling to land. If, for whatever reason, we do need to go miss, the miss approach point is 3.5 miles past the Ogden VR at a waypoint called Ruyo. So once we're 3.5 miles past the VR, that's when we'll execute the miss approach if we need to. So that is everything there. Last thing I want to say before we join this DME arc. We are not going to be covering the DME arcs in detail in this video. If you have, if you don't know how to fly a DME arc, go and watch our DME arcs video before coming back to this one. It's just too much for a single video. Okay, go watch DME arcs, come back, and then you can see us do the DME arc here. Again, we're going to do it here, but we're not going to get into detail of how everything works with the DME arc. Okay. All right. So I think we're about ready there. We're going to have to go ahead and make our turn. There's our 9.5 DME. So we're going to turn. I'm going to click it over to heading mode. Make our turn to join the arc. 90 degree turn. We'll just call it 240 to make it easy. And then I'm also going to start flipping the CDI probably to 150 all the way around here so that we're intercepting each. 90 degrees of radial, or 10 degrees of radial, sorry, at a 90 degree intercept. You can see in the sim it does take quite a bit of time to get this thing. See, yeah, I need all the way over there. All right, let's go and put this on 140, and then we'll turn another 10 degrees. Cool, we're just doing our turn 10, twist 10. At this point, we could go ahead and do our approach checklist as well. This would include things such as, you know, flipping on your landing lights, adjusting your mixture, making sure your seat belts are fastened, that uh, all the baggage is stowed, and everything like that. So you can go ahead and do that as we're doing our turn 10 twist down. Again, we're going to stay at this 10 DME arc. You can see our distance right here. Our needle is coming centered. So we'll go ahead and turn 10 degrees on our heading and then we will twist our CDI 10 degrees put it on 130 to be super precise awesome we're going to take this around until we are on radial 281 and then we'll be flying 101 inbound in other words once the tail gets over here to 281 the tail of our needle where the head gets to 101 we're going to be done with the arc and we're going to be turning inbound to proceed direct to the VOR at that point also at that point, we'll be in our descent down to 5,700 feet. Need 
needles come in centered so we'll turn tan on our heading and we'll twist our CDI needle tan 120 perfect This point we'd also probably be talking to ATC they may be clearing us for the approach or um, whatnot once we get a little closer to the Ogden VR they would switch us over to obviously Ogden Tower and Ogden Tower would tell us which runway to land on everything like that Two more turns in our DME arc. We're keeping an eye on our DME, our speed, our altitude, headings, everything like that. Let's go another 10, another 10, and we're going to 101. Okay, so once our course, once the head of our needle is on 101, we're going to make a big 90 degree turn to the left inbound to intercept. Now, I know that I need to go down to uh, 5,700 feet, so I'm going to go ahead and bug that. I can't descend yet, but I am going to go ahead and bug it with my altitude bug over here, 5,700, so that I can just kind of focus on getting to that altitude after I turn inbound towards the VR, making our descent. When we do make that descent, we're going to do it about 800 feet. 7 to 800 feet per minute. We do have 10 miles on this radio before we get to the VR, so we'll say 700 feet per minute. That'll be plenty of time. So we'll turn 10 right there. And then we're going to twist 10. My CDI needle will get over there. Awesome. So 101. So actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to keep this heading coming over. And we can see that our final approach course is alive. You can kind of see how that needle is coming in here. That means our final approach course is alive. And we could start our descent once that course is alive. And it is. The needle's moving. So, But I'm just getting my heading set up. And I've got plenty of time. I'm not too worried about it. Go ahead and switch over to nav mode here. Oh, nav mode. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and bring some power back. And we'll nose down, what do we say, 700 feet a minute. Let's go ahead and bring that back, 700 feet per minute. As our autopilot, I guess I turned too far to the left, autopilot wanted to go back to the right a little bit until we intercept that radio. So, we got ourselves a 700 foot per minute descent. I brought that power back when I started the descent so that we wouldn't get cruising way too fast on this approach here. Watching our speed. Maybe I'll bring even some more power. So now we're descending on our final approach course of 101. Again, we're going down to 5,700 feet, at which point we will level out and we're going to stay at 5,700 feet until we cross the VOR. After crossing the VOR, we'll be able to go down another 700 feet to 5,000 which is our circling minimum. So after the VR, we will not be able to go below 5,000 feet. Once we do get to that 5,000 feet, go ahead and look outside the cockpit and we'll make a circle to land approach on runway 21. That's the plan throughout the rest of the approach here. Bringing back even some more power. We got 500 feet to go to our new altitude. And we still have six miles to the VOR. So make sure that when you get down to this new altitude of 5,700 that you do add your power back in. Otherwise you're gonna get way too slow and you can stall. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Two hundred feet to the new altitude. feet. I'm going to go ahead and start to bring some power in. Try to keep her right around 90 knots. As 
we level out. turbulent outside it seems and we still have 3.6 miles to the VR Making small adjustments to power, so we're watching our altitude, our course, everything like that. The other thing is, typically for circling approaches, I don't like to bring my flaps in as I would if I was going straight into land. You know, like crossing the final approach fix or a mile before the final approach fix, you know, putting in those flaps and slowing down. I just like to fly it kind of like a normal traffic pattern so once you get down and we're circling around once we kind of get our beam point then we can bring our power back add in some flaps and stuff then so i'm not going to put in my flaps now like i usually would if i was going in on a straight in approach okay we've got a mile and a half though to the vr so i'm going to go ahead and bug our next altitude which is 5,000 feet remember can't de can't descend to it yet until we cross but i can bug it so that i remember what it is back a little bit of power. We got one mile. And we're going to do this one 800 feet per minute on our descent so that we can get down and we have more time to see our airport environment. For there's the two front flips. So we'll go ahead, make our descent 800 feet a minute, bring in our power back. Not sure where our plane's going here. Let's go ahead and head back to our heading. Kind of gets confused when it goes, crosses the VR, that cone of confusion. Making our descent down to 5,000. Remember not to get too low. our needle coming back in after the cone of confusion usually in real life it comes in a little bit quicker I feel like but whatever. remember at 3.5 DME down here if we don't see the airport environment that we need then we have to go missed okay but we can come down to the 5,000 feet and level out which is where we're gonna stay 5,000 so I'm gonna start to bring in a little bit of power here so don't get too slow we can just stay here looking for the airport. If we didn't see it at 3.5, then we'd initiate the missed approach. However, we are gonna say we're down at our minimums here. I feel like we did pretty good job. So let's go ahead and look outside. There is our airport. Let's kick off our autopilot and our autopilot master. And let's go ahead and circle. Yeah. Remember, we don't wanna go below this 5,000 feet as we circle the runway 2-1 until we need to for landing and we don't need to fly a circle to land exactly like a uh, traffic pattern okay we're circling to land we're not actually flying a traffic pattern here but we're just going to kind of keep an eye on where we're going kind of getting a little downwind over here for two on watching our altitude and speed and everything we are a little bit lower than traffic pattern altitude for this airport because of this approach, which is totally fine. Just uh, make sure that you 
remember that as you begin your approach to land and everything that you will be a couple hundred feet lower bring it over this way maybe even just a little bit more now if we were to go back into the clouds here at some point we would actually have to make a climbing turn so if we lost visual reference with the airport we'd actually have to make a climbing turn towards the airport towards the landing runway until we are able to join the missed approach course so just because you're here doesn't mean you're necessarily guaranteed to land okay I'm gonna bring back some power put in some flaps start a nice easy descent as we come around it is kind of hard to see exactly where the runway is at on the flight simulator but we're gonna do our best and we can descend below that 5,000 feet now because we are because we need to to make our landing so I'm gonna bring that power back and keep slowing down we're looking for our runway there it is power back when the white arc will extend our next notch of flaps actually go ahead and go flaps full since we're a little high flaps are full we'll be coming in about 70 knots for approach speed Watching our speed and our altitude, making sure we're on center line. Glide path looks good. A little bit high, but that's all right. Speed's looking good. Center line, glide path looks great now. Wait till we cross the threshold of the runway, and then we'll walk our power back to idle and make our landing. Cross the threshold here, bringing our throttle back to idle getting into our round out flare touching down on our thousand footers and on center line of the runway and we could retract our flaps if we wanted and that's it guys for our VOR approach that one was a little bit different because we also got a little circuit of land in there so you got to see how the VR approach works with the DME arc the circuit of land again if you don't know much about DME arcs go back and watch the DME arc video we didn't go into detail of it here but we do have a video explaining how to get into and execute those arcs but in that that's it for this approach video guys thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the next one coming up soon